is taking place in a magnificent, unique space. Hey, thank you, Yana. Um, welcome to Seven World Trade Center. And I'd like to acknowledge again Hikmet Evsek for his great support of the Foreign Press Foundation. Thank you. And the preparation we give to the future generation of journalists is our paramount challenge. To Lali Weymouth, the senior editor of Washington Post, to give her remarks, and I would like to have a warm welcome for her. Nice of you, and I think uh, Thanos sets a great example to all uh, young people who want to become journalists. He is incredibly persistent. I turned him down again and again, and he told me, no, 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 you must come, and that's the reason I'm here. It's really Thanos, and he's a great example, and I have to say he's really a star. So tonight, I think we should just celebrate you and your achievements, and thank the Association and Thanos for inviting me here. foreign correspondents and journalists is not just to report the news from the United States back to our home countries. It is that through the integrity of our reporting and the truth of the news stories is to make people to understand that the nations do not live in bubbles but are interconnected. We cannot perceive and assess our world, our governments, our media and ourselves based only on what is happening in each of our home counties of residence. That is why for all of us here tonight, being part of the community of journalists and supporters of the Foreign Press Association, it is a privilege. The Vice President of Bayer, Mr. Ray Kerkis. We've been supporter of the foreign press for many years. This association is one that has uh, stayed with myself and my vice president of external affairs for Bayer, Chris Loader, for many years because of the impact and the power that it plays and the role that it plays in society. Thriving and knowledgeable media, compromised of diversity of voices, guided by facts and integrity, is crucial to the health of our society. We believe that. Truth must be told. So, with that, we are very proud and honored to announce our scholarship award winner this year. Bianca He. Bianca is a multimedia journalist from Guangzhou, China. Deeply honored to be here um, with so many of you who are the leaders, really, of the free press in America and really all around the world. The power of good journalism is why Johnson & Johnson is here tonight and really why this room is so gratefully packed. And it's my pleasure right now to bring, really, a journalist who shines an incredible light on extraordinary challenges these refugees have been facing, and she does much, much more. But please join me in a round of applause for Samaya.
evening, friends and fellow supporters. It's a pleasure to be in your company tonight. I'd like to thank the FPA, its board, and of course our friend Thanos for bringing us together at such a wonderful event. It's work to encourage the pursuit of journalism through the next generation of foreign correspondents. It's important to help maintain the pillars of a free press, inform and share diverse points of view, perpetuate truth, and foster accountability, be a voice of those unheard, and continue the tradition of innovation and quality storytelling. With that, I am so very pleased to announce the recipient of the Microsoft Foreign Press Award. From Argentina, Aldana Vadas. Ladies and gentlemen, we are also very happy to have with us uh, this evening the president of United Healthcare Global, Ms. Christina Farazi. Laurence Dussault is a reporter, visual journalist, and radio broadcaster from Quebec, who has been on the front lines of public health, the environment, American politics. She's just beginning, but I'm sure will be a long and rewarding career on the front lines. It is my honor and pleasure to introduce you to this year's recipient of the United Health Group Foreign Press Scholarship Award. Please join me in giving a well-deserved congratulations to Laurence Dussault. Award in the name of Kim Wall to Miss Sir 
Sunam Yar, who comes from Columbia University School of Journalism. She has a powerful, descriptive, and very articulate voice. Congratulations, Sunam. now like to introduce you to a great visionary, our leader, ladies and gentlemen, president of the Foreign Press Association of the United States, Mr. David Michaels. It is an honor and privilege to lead the Foreign Press Association during this centennial year. And I thank you for joining us to celebrate not only this historic milestone, but the Foreign Press Foundation's 25th year of providing scholarship awards to foreign students studying journalism in the United States. I want to thank all the prominent organizations and corporations whose generous support will help us continue this work into our second century. Particular appreciation goes to Western Union for their recognition and support of the Foreign Press Association's current and future initiatives. In these tumultuous times, supporting the work of international journalists has arguably never been more critical. As a member organization of journalists, we believe a free press is crucial for the functioning of democracy, and it is a human right to know the unbiased truth. The truth shall set you free, as true today as it was when first quoted over 2,000 years ago. In many countries, political and industrial interests not only wish to control the mess message, but sadly, also the messenger. My advice to them is, control the message, but not the messenger. Otherwise, your message loses credibility. How can the media industry return to its original role of the trusted messenger? I suggest that we must first re-establish trusted international relationships at a core level. As one of the oldest non-political, non-partisan press associations in the world, I believe that we have a responsibility to our international membership to seek solutions to protect our profession and to build and maintain bridges between our members' nations. As the Foreign Press Association, 
enters its second century, we remain committed to events and programs from across the political and business spectrum to provide our members with the facts, insights, and perspective essential to building bridges between countries and cultures around the world. As the Foreign Press Association grew in membership and stature, it also recognized through its Foreign Press Awards those exceptional individuals who had made significant contributions to the arts, sciences, politics and media. In celebration of our centennial year, we are reinstituting these prestigious international awards as one of our next 100 years initiatives. Because the award recognized deserving individuals from any profession or occupation, any country or culture, it was said by some that a foreign press award was very much like a Nobel Prize, but without the cash. <laughs> Awardees included Albert Einstein, Tennessee Williams, David Lean, Elizabeth Taylor, Henry Kissinger, Walter Cronkite, Stanley Kramer, Billy Wilder, Mike Nichols, William Avril Harriman, the list goes on and on and on. The Foreign Press Awards will also be a catalyst to form and grow bridges and bonds between press associations and journalists around the globe. No sector of a nation's society is more informed than its professional journalists, and no sector is more aware of those deserving recognition than its journalists. Therefore, journalists, through their national press associations, will be invited to nominate a person from their country who deserves global recognition. To be part of this initiative of global recognition and awards will be an essential incentive for continuous engagement and bridge building through this informal strategic alliance between press associations around the world. The Foreign Press Association's next 100 years initiatives also include a co-production of a multimedia series called Global Matters That Matter. Principal topics will include water, food and food sustainability, cancer, human trafficking and media literacy. I thank you all for being part of our first 100 years and I look forward with high expectations to you being part of our next 100 years. Thank you. forward to being here with you all tonight. However, as I'm sure you can all relate in this room that the news has been somewhere else. Barbara Felina, Senior Vice President of Talent and Business of ABC News. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Hikmet Ersa. I am a son of an Austrian Catholic mother and a Turkish Muslim father who was raised in Istanbul. I went to University in Vienna. My wife is half Indian, half Austrian, and now we all live in Denver. <laughs> and yes, and yes, we do celebrate Christmas, eight, and divide. <laughs> Yeah. At 
my company, we are staffed by global citizens who have lived and worked all around the world and speaking 137 languages. My top executive team is global and diverse. My general counsel, she was born in Brazil to Chinese parents and immigrated to the U.S. My president for payments was born in Lebanon, studied in France and lives in Dubai. My CFO was born in India and immigrated to the U.S. I'm honored to recognize all of you, especially you are the voice of voiceless and defenders of objectivity. Your dedication to the truth is definitely globally under attack. But there has been never more important to continue to uphold the truth across the world. So, this is my wish to the Foreign Press Association and its members on the 100 years of anniversary. Fulfill your role as the voice of the voiceless. May you continue to speak the truth. When the powerful are calling for division, be the voice for those who are building bridges around the globe. It's a great privilege to present the winner of the Foreign Press Award for me. I believe it's people like him who will keep America great. It is my honor to present the Foreign Press Award to Farid Zakaria. Um, let me start by saying a warm thank you to David Michaels, the president of the Foreign Press Association, Hikmet Ersik, the president of Western Union, and Thanos Timadis, the executive director of the Foreign Press Association. I also want to express my deepest appreciation to the boards and the hundreds of members of the Foreign Press Association for this great, great honor. I, I am so sorry that I cannot be here with you. Uh, we have been trying for many months now, actually, ever since he became president, to get an interview with Emmanuel Macron, the president of France. Uh, we have been negotiating back and forth, and suddenly, at the very last minute, uh, the Elysee Palace decided that they were willing to do it, but it had to be basically today and tomorrow. Um, and I had to spend some time with him, and then we do the interview on the eve of the armistice of World War I, when there is, of course, this big Paris peace forum. So the timing was, from their point of view, critical, and we couldn't, uh, we couldn't change it. Keep doing the job we've done and spread the word everywhere, because what happens in the United States, what happens in uh, countries in Europe, does have an impact almost everywhere in the world. So, again, a huge thank you for this extraordinary honor. Um, I wish I could be there. Uh, please keep up the good work. You're now going to hear from one of my oldest friends, uh, who I went to college and graduate school with, uh, who now has a job that I aspired to at one time. I was managing editor of Foreign Affairs. Gideon Rose is, of course, uh, the editor-in-chief of Foreign Affairs. So, had we coincided, he would have been my boss. So, in some sense, you're hearing from uh, someone even more qualified than me. Thank you again. Yeah, Farid, he, he, all that is completely true. He was really, really hoping to be here, and but he's also been desperately chasing Macron for two years. I've been in the room where he's been sucking up to Macron, desperately hoping to get the interview with him when they finally called, he had it.